Hi folks, on a lot of the reports I've been bringing you lately, I've been talking about the need to treaty with the tribes and the benefits we can get from that and you know what's really going on here with sovereignty in this country. Now we're in a pretty desperate situation at the moment folks and when I've been presenting this to people, a lot of the comments I've been seeing is, oh you're saying give the country back to the Aboriginals, this is going to achieve nothing. Well no, that's not what I'm talking about at all. And for a start, as I've mentioned before on the reports, there is no such thing as an Aboriginal. But in order to talk about this, um, I brought someone here to, uh, to explain things to you who knows the situation pretty well. And it's a pretty important guy that I've got here. This is a friend of mine called Gunnam Batty Jakamara. That's his tribal name. He has a, a white person's name as well. You may know him as Mark McMurtry. He's made a, a reasonable amount of noise about this sort of stuff in the past. But Mark's a very specific man. He's a very, um, a very unique sort of an individual. There's, a, there's actually a, a story, there's a prophecy that exists in tribal culture that there will one day be a man who is a white-skinned man but has the blood of both tribes and knows the law of both realms and will be able to bring the people together and bring the country back to the people. The tribal elders all believe this is Gunambadi Jakamara. And having come to know the man over the past, I don't know, 10 or 15 years, I must have known the man by now, um, I've come to believe that this is, is true as well. So I brought him onto this report today to just explain the situation of sovereignty in this country and to, uh, to show you what's really going on here and just to try to explain it in terms you can understand. And I just want to give the floor to you, Gunnam, and just tell us what's really going on here. What is the situation? Where do we stand? And well, how, how can we get out of the mess we're in? Uh, the situation on this continent, um, which is different to most others, is pretty simple. 230 years ago, a monumental fraud was undertaken. And ever since then, um, the residents of this continent who are subjects of the Crown um, have been misinformed, misled, and deluded as to who actually owns the land. Um, the monarchs of the Parliament of the United Kingdom have claimed the, the form of sovereignty over the land. Um, up until 1973, when the, um, a number of parliamentarians um, undertook a, a um, bloodless coup in this country and stole sovereignty supposedly from the uh, monarch of the Parliament of the United Kingdom and placed um, sovereignty into the hands of the parliaments, um, which is when we started to hear this term parliamentary sovereignty, which by the way is an absolute absurdity. Um, a parliament cannot hold sovereignty. Um, end of story. Nor, nor can a corporation for that matter. But our story is very simple. And this is like our story of the history of this continent from a, a, a law perspective is a very simple story. What happened was that in 1788, um, Arthur Philip arrived at a place that they call Sydney Harbour, Sydney Cove, and he got off a boat and he came ashore and he stuck his toe in the sand to walk up the beach. Now the very split second that he stuck his toe in the sand, he subjected himself to the law of the land, the law of the tribes. The instructions that he had from his parliament was that he was to identify places to settle, negotiate purchase of the land, wait for the pay for the land, wait for the land to be vacated and then occupy the land. None of that was undertaken. What he did was, and for reasons best known to himself, he walked up the beach after subjecting himself to the law of the land. He walked up the beach and put a stick in the ground with a rag hanging off it um, that um, even most Australians to this day still um, can't even tell the truth about. Um, they would say that it was the Union Jack that was put on the stick on the, and start shoved in the ground uh, when in fact the Union Jack wasn't even created until 1801, 13 years later. That's how bogus Australia's history is. That's just, a, that's just one little bit. Um, what happened then was that um, by subjecting himself to the law of the tribes, by then walking up the beach and making a claim under foreign law that he had somehow taking, taken possession of the lands of all of the separate sovereign states that live on this continent, um, he, that he had done so by sticking a, a stick with a rag in the ground. We, if this is European flag law, we still to this day don't recognise it. 
yeah, let alone 230 years ago. And this would be like if, if I was to walk onto the shores of France and stick a, a flag there and say, I claim all of Europe. Yeah, yeah. When there's all Including Poland and, and, and all Russia. these other countries, yeah. Russia, China, the whole continent, that's mine because I walked onto the beach in France. Yep. Because there were all of these that's, other... That's the lunacy of it. Yeah, there was all these tribal nations here. And, and, you, and you're going, but, but Scott Morrison said I could. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Fuck me. Pardon me, but fuck me. <laughs> you know, like yeah. the lunacy of everything that this whole bullshit of Australia is based upon is remarkable. It's remarkable that people could be stupid enough to follow it and believe it. But anyway, after that, what happened was that um, there are numerous contentions um, by the, the Crown in various rights that they claim that they took radical title and sovereignty um, and dominion over the land when Arthur Phillips stuck the rag in the ground. Well, we would argue that that's not even right, even according to their own version of events, because we can see how that eight years after that event, Captain um, um, Collins, um, who was the Judge Advocate General of the First Fleet at the time, he had a conversation with Ben Long, and, he, and he's written in this in his journal from 1896, eight years after the event that they claim they took sovereignty. He talks about how that Ben Long and his people maintained their hereditary title over their land. Now, it's not fucking possible if they took sovereignty. So that's just the first hole in this argument that they base everything on. Well, that's just another another hole in it, right? Then you we jump forward to say, for example, um, well, forget all the stuff in the middle. Um, forget the, the proclamation um, in 1844 by Queen Victoria, where she said that um, that any dealings with the, in any dealings with the tribes that uh, the settlers were not allowed to allow the tribes to be the unintentional authors of damage to themselves. In other words, they couldn't convince a tribe to sell a thousand acres for a can of beads. Okay, it had to be everything had to be done on a fair and equitable basis. None of which occurred. 1875, Queen Victoria creates the Ordering Council to amend the Pacific Island Protection Act. And I know there are people who say that this doesn't apply in Australia. Blah 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 blah. Well, you need to have a look at the definitions. And I know that there is a line that's that's quoted a. Um, a geographical line that's quoted and it says to the east and all the rest of it, but have a look at the, the definitions in the Act that clarifies it, particularly Section 2, uh, sorry, um, the, 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 the amendment to the Act in 1875. Because there's two parts of the Act. There's 1872, which is the initial Act, and then there's the 1875 Ordering Council by Queen Victoria, which amended it. And the only two parts that are really important are Section 6, um, which defines the jurisdiction of the Crown and the extent of its jurisdiction and it quite clearly says that um, uh, the only jurisdiction they could have there was over British subjects. It says it multiple times in that one section of the Act. It states clearly Her Majesty's subjects, not the tribes, Her Majesty's subjects. The differentiation being that in the next paragraph of the amendment it says the rights of the tribes. So what we're talking about here is the right of the Queen and what we're talking about next is the right of the tribes. And it says, under the title of rights of the tribes, that the Crown is not allowed to extend or construe to extend sovereignty or dominion into the Pacific Islands and the Australasian colonies. It says the other places, but if you go to the definitions, the other places are the Australasian colonies. And it says that, um, that uh, sovereignty and dominion is to remain with the chiefs and the rulers and the peoples of the tribes. Okay, very simple. Now... There are a set of rules called Housbury's Rules which govern the operation of the, the Westminster Parliaments. The, for that period, from 1875 to 1900, say, the contemporaneous version was Edition 3. Now, if you go and, to Edition 3 and you can get online, and you go to page 337, paragraph 559, part 12 and 12.1, it discusses two very important things. First of all, it discusses the fact that um, one Parliament can't derogate from the law of another parliament. It can only add to it by amendment. It can't take away from it. Can't, in words, it can't derogate. And the other thing is that... No, that just took my mind off it. Um, uh, can't derogate... Um, Housebury's rules. Yeah, can't derogate... The parliament. Yeah. Can only amend. 
Yes, they can only amend. And also, the other is that, that they are not allowed to usurp the sovereignty of any other parliament or any other people. And no other people are allowed to usurp their sovereignty. That is the right of the, the UK sovereignty. And it gives an example that says, for example, um, the Maori assembled in their parliament at Waitangi. The Crown was not allowed to usurp. As an example, they could not usurp these, these, these tribal councils. Yeah? They call them parliaments. I call their parliament a tribal council because if you have a look at their tribal council, um, despite the fact that Tony Blair breached the House of Lords Act in 1999 when he amended it to include people who are not proper peers, um, the peers are the bloodline connected representatives of the country. Yeah? That's their tribes. Their bloodline connected law people are their peers. No wonder they got pissed when they were removed. Yeah? Mm. Payback's a bitch, eh? Um, yeah. So that's 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 how we know that they they recognised our sovereignty well after this 18, 1788 step up the beach, right? Then we have a look at 1967 or 1900. They created the constitution. When they created the constitution, remembering they can't go back against what's previously written law. So what they did was at section 51.2 26 in the Constitution, which was the document for the administration of the, the Crown subjects on, on this continent. Um, 5126 said that they could not make laws for people of the Aboriginal race. Well, that's because their jurisdiction was limited previously in Section 6 of the Amendment to the Pacific Island Protection Act in 1875, where it said that the only jurisdiction the British could have was over their own subjects. So by implication, they can't make laws for Aboriginal people. And that had to be written into their constitution for the Commonwealth of Australia to clarify it, to put it in stone. Section 127, they could not um, count us as um, uh, any part of the Commonwealth or any, any part thereof, right? Um, they couldn't count us in the, the number of people. That was because, pursuant to Section 7, they could not assume our sovereignty. They could not count us as part of them. They were here as subjects of the Crown, we were here as the Sovereigns. They hadn't dealt with the issue of sovereignty, and that didn't deal with it. Roll on forward to 1967. Now, there's a whole bunch of shit in the middle of all this stuff, right? This is just the, 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 the main pointers in the, sticks in the stand. Sam. 1967, there was a referendum of the people who were subject to the Constitution, and they decided that they would amend their Constitution that governs them in as much as it spoke about us. So what they did was they removed two negative averments. One was the averment that said they couldn't count us as part of their population, and the other was the one that said they couldn't make laws for us. But what they couldn't do was specifically replace them with positive statements that they could count us as part of their population and they could make laws for us. Because until they do get that authority, they can't put that in writing. And they don't have that authority from us. Well, what they thought they could smoke and mirror this one through, right? Because they realised, even back then, if we have to ask for this, people are going to realise we don't have it, right? So, next 40 years, they let that roll on and roll over and get embedded into the Australian psyche until the 23rd of May 2010, when the OSTF was formed, the original Sovereign Tribal Federation. And our first point of business was we... We fired off to the Queen, to Banky Moon, to Julie Gillard as a Prime Minister of Australia, etc., etc. A notice stating that all of the member tribes of the original Sovereign Tribal Federation gave notice that we did not recognise their constitution, nor were we recognised in it, and that in the absence of that recognition, um, uh, we would appreciate them sort of keeping their business to themselves and leaving us alone, basically. The next thing we know is six weeks later, Julie Gillard comes out and says, we have to recognise the Aboriginal people in the Constitution. They still have to use certain words <clears throat> like Aboriginal, Indigenous, all the rest of it. Even though Indigenous, we are not Indigenous. Indigenous means a naturalised citizen of the realm. It comes from the Latin Indigenous. We are not Indigenous. We are not citizens of the realm. I am a tribal man. I am not one of Her Majesty's subjects. They, they force certain things on you. That is, that is um, their problem. You know what I mean? um, if they force things on you in order for you to have to use those instruments to survive, use those instruments, but they always belong to them. You know? um, anyway, so the notice went out and on the 23rd of February 2013, 
Um, the um, sorry, the, the 13th of February 2013 at 3 p.m. The the federal government introduced the recognition bill into the parliament, and when they introduced the recognition bill, um, what they had to say on the record in their parliament and to the world, because the world's press was there to watch this, <clears throat> was that they wanted to recognise us. Now, in order for them to say they wanted to enter, a re they wanted to enter a recognizance with us, demonstrates two things on the record. First of all, there is them and there is us, and second of all, there is no agreement between us. That's the cold hard fact. Now, the tribal people on this continent know where we stand. We do know that we still own the place. We do know that the land belongs to us, but we understand that there are people who have constructed lives and families and businesses and all the rest of it on the estates and that that has to be dealt with. We get that. But what we're saying is um, that the only thing that has to change is the name at the helm of the ship. Because the Queen isn't the monarch of this land. She never has been. And there's very good reason to state that she's not even the Queen of England or the United Kingdom, but that's another story. Um, the fact is that, that she doesn't have a claim here um, because any claim she might have had is, was removed in 1973. <clears throat> um, we believe that land was put under trust. Um, all of the tribes' estates were put under trust, held by parishes. Those trusts were um, stripped last year at the creation of a singular trust. And the original Sovereign Tribal Federation has now <clears throat> um, been appointed as the trustee of the tribe's um, um, assets with the tribes as the beneficiary. Mm. So we've effectively taken back what the Crown took and gave to itself to administer for us. We have now said, well, sorry, we've taken that back. Um, let's deal with that going forward. And you've kind of done that all under their law as well, haven't you? And you kind of set the whole Recognition Act up because it's all about just getting them to... to Hmm. To pay for the fact that, yeah, you know, and and to recognise the fact that, hey, there's no agreement between us. There's no. But they they had no idea when when the recognition thing started. They were three steps behind the game all the way down the line. They started printing recognition T-shirts. The, the 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 R symbol wasn't even their idea. They they think it was. But by the time they had everything ready to go, we were getting T-shirts. We were taking their T-shirts, going and collecting their R campaign T-shirts for nothing. Right? Thank you for printing them. And take them away, and we had people set up to, with the screen print, just putting a circle with a stroke through it. There's our shirts. Yeah. Same with their stickers. Yeah. Same with everything they basically had for their art campaign. We could just put the circle with a stroke through it. Yeah. They paid. They paid for ninety percent of our advertising costs yeah. to the country. And you gave, and they gave you the opportunity to basically say, well, thank say. you for making that legal distinction that there's two laws yes. that exist on this yes. land. Well, we really only yes. one valid law that exists well, on this land. Well, and you were right there at the parliament when it all happened too, weren't you? Yeah, yeah, we served into the parliament a declaration of nationhood and self-determination for the autochthonous <coughs> tribal people of this continent. Um, we are autochthonous. We are not indigenous. We're not Aboriginal. Um, we are autochthonous tribal peoples. Autochthonous meaning from the very dust of the ground that you're walking on. And you've gone to the UN about this matter as well. Yes, we went to the UN in 2012 and we told them very clearly that um, the Commonwealth of Australia does not represent the tribal peoples of this continent, that the National Congress of Australia's First Peoples um, is nothing but a corporation wholly owned by the Crown um, that represents less than 0.185% of the tribal people. Um, they don't speak for the tribes and they never will. All they are is, a, a, is another voice box for the Crown on the international stage and the people that, that, that run that, that show are nothing more than, than puppets who will say whatever they're told to say to make their, their, their uh, paymaster look good in the eyes of the world. Yeah. They have and no care for the truth. And you're speaking on behalf of the tribes and all the tribes because all of the tribes have signed into the... No, not all of them. There's a few that haven't. Um, um, there's very few that haven't, but there are a few that haven't. Um, you know, uh, we're not rushing. Uh, you know, it's taken us 10 years so far to get the tribes that we have to sign up, which is the vast majority. But we're not 
rushing out and trying to jam it down people's throats. We're just introducing people to it. And the funny thing is that as soon as people see the truth, they see the truth. Yeah. And what would be the advantage of people like um, uh, treating with the tribes and stuff? Do you want to talk about the land that you're doing down okay. in... Um... Well, what, what we've got is um, um, a few thousand acres that um, has been purchased or is being purchased um, uh, under the Crown's title process, I suppose you could say, um, just so that so, so that no one is injured by the, by what we're going to do. Um, and what we're doing is we're inviting people to um, purchase lots on that land that have been properly and what you would call legally um, approved. Um, those lots are for sale. Um, there's 2.47 acres, um, uh, and you're allowed to clear an acre of that um, for a house site and whatever. Um, and the rest of it has to stand. On the whole of the property, all of the um, preserved areas are properly GPS marked um, and properly set aside according to all the planning, blah, blah, blah. Um, it's an amazing place. The land sits inside a, a vortex, an energy vortex. Um, 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 and there's, there's, there's a lot of things I could say about it that I'd rather say to people when they're standing on country than, mm. you know, um, yeah. the words, the words, the, the words of... will sound like bullshit. Yeah, there's a lot You've of got sacred. To be standing amongst it to see it. There's a lot of sacred sites and stuff on there, but what you're doing is setting up essentially a community that's going to be under tribal law. Pretty much, yeah. It'll be the the, the um, bylaw for the development area will be the Minjabal tribal law, yeah, um, which is predicated on the very simplistic uh, guideline that you do no harm. You know? Yeah. Um, it it should it should be a, a a really nice place to live. It's not. It's it's don't get me wrong. It's not. Um, it's not a, uh, what do you call them, a prepper's village or anything like that. Yeah. Um, although most of the people that get um, uh, approved to purchase a block will be people of very similar mind, which are people who have their, both their eyes open and maybe one or two ears. Yeah. Um, you know, um, um, they'll be all very very much like-minded. We're looking at um, uh, having a Steiner school on the pro, on the, on the, the, in the precinct. Um, we're looking at, um, at the moment we're raising funds to also open a, a very large um, uh, art gallery and keeping place. We've had the OSTF, um, it will have its headquarters there, we'll have uh, already been bequeathed over 1500 um, sacred artefacts to store um, on behalf of various tribes that want things kept um, securely. Um, We've got a huge amount of artworks that have been given to OSTF from very renowned artists that we need to store. Um, and we're looking at, um, we hope it'll be the facility which will be part of the learning um, or the education precinct on the on the um, development. That uh, art gallery will be somewhere where our kids will be able to go and be taught the truth. Hmm. You know? It'll be open to schools and all the rest of it, you know, for tours and that. Um, the land itself, um, like you said earlier, has a huge amount of sacred sites on it, huge amount of uh, very significant sites. Um, people that drive across the block, um, I, like, I like sort of just sitting and driving across and I know where the energy lines are on the property and and um, um, AB's here at the moment, um, he can tell you we know where they are and you can drive across and where you come from the male side to the female side on one particular ridge the softening of the energy is that that noticeable that, that I've seen it bring bring men and women to tears, but I've seen it bring men to tears. Mm. It's an amazing place, and you can't, like I said, you have to be there because the words that you speak about this place sound um, a bit airy fairy. And like anyone who knows me knows, I'm not an airy fairy sort of a character. Um, but there's no, for me, it's very difficult to explain because it's such a, a peaceful, soft energy. You know. Mm. But it's really important that people get a handle on what's going on with this. The fact that, you know, the Crown has no, no claim to this land. All these no. laws that they're pushing on us, especially at the moment with what's going on with all this, this pandemic. I mean, it, it's really outrageous. And, you know, the, the benefits of people, you know, getting a handle on what's really going on with sovereignty in this country, getting on what's really going on with the legal system in this country, because they're trying to find remedies to... to Anything that they're throwing at us, it's so difficult because they tie up in red tape. But what people have to understand is that their law actually has no standing on this land. It only has standing on this land if you agree to it 
And the way to, to step out of that is to, to step back into tribal law, because tribal law exists well, on this ex country. Exactly. You know? um, the, the Crown would argue that our law doesn't still exist, but um, I had a, um, a um, I suppose you could say, a discourse with a, a judge one day in court, and I said, well, look, I believe that my law does still exist, and if I can prove to you that my law still does exist, um, are you willing to accept that I, there is an equitable estoppel on the claim being made that our law still doesn't exist and that it's not recognised by the Commonwealth? He's oh, of course. So I pulled out the um, ab study form, application form, and I went to part B, page 4, question 16, and one of the questions was, are you married, and if so, is your marriage recognised under Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander law? Now, given that that was a document printed by the Australian government printer, and if I, from memory it was um, SYD slash 1 slash 9195, or slash 195, it was a number on the form, and it asked the question about your marriage being recognised under our law. That form is used as a contract. People that have applied for ab study and have made a fraudulent application or not committed to the to the rules and not obeyed the rules have had money taken back and they've been sued on the basis of that contract. So the fact that that contract has been upheld in their own court as being an accurate document, then they have to accept that our law must still exist. And that is an equitable estoppel on them courts ever saying that our law doesn't exist. Because any judge, any judge or magistrate or justice who wants to sit in one of the Crown's courts and say that that does not acknowledge the continued existence of our law is a liar, barefaced liar. Simple as that. That is an equitable estoppel. Now, if they can't say our law doesn't exist, which means they have to accept that it does, the next question is, they have to accept that that is to the fullest degree because our law is not a part law it's a whole law you can't it's not like the white fellas law where you can write something today and become as law and then cross it out tomorrow and it's not right with our law you can't change things um you know one of the things i used to use as a an example of um our law and their law can i that line next one yeah, it's, uh, and it's this. I can get, I can get the white for the law, and I can change it with a stroke of a pen. But the one thing you can't change is this. This is our law. That, that's the law of gravity. That's one of our mother's laws. You can't change that shit. And because you can't change it, you can't supplant it. Because to supplant something over the top of it, to make it bound to something else, is to change the nature of that law. Well, that can't happen. And it doesn't matter, they're learning now, just now. They're just learning that because they have supplanted law over the top of what Mother Nature demands, they're starting to see the ramifications now. Hmm, pretty much, yeah. pretty much. What would you advise people to do in, the, in our current situation, Mark, with all this bullshit we're facing from these parasites at the moment, all this lockdown and all this bullshit we're going through? Right. Got any words on that? Well, me personally... Um, Everyone knows what I think of the system. <laughs> but, but in all fairness to, <clears throat> to logic, I would state to people, be careful how you deal with agents of the state. Okay. Um, be polite. Uh, be immovable in relation to your rights. And you have rights not to be forced medicated. You have a whole bunch of rights that the state will probably try to take away very shortly. <clears throat> that sounds a bit um, a bit out there, but um, I remember when we first started talking about some of the things we talk about that everyone talks about on a daily basis now, um, when we first started bringing this shit out 20 years ago, uh, people called, called me a raving nutter then too. Had a bit of a edit there, folks. Camera dropped out, overheats the way it is. But we were talking about, um, where were we? What were we talking about? Any idea? <sighs> <laughs> I think we're just taking the piss out of the, the crown and its bodgy claims, mate. Yeah, hey, listen, and also yeah. I've just been shown some uh, incredible sacred objects, some objects of law 
from both sides of the fence that have pretty well blown me out so yeah I think what we were talking about was what we can do in the face of this whole whole situation with this lockdown and everything they're doing and and you know the, the, the benefit of treating with the tribes and realizing that that's the actual law that exists on this land anyway yeah so I think we were somewhere in there so yeah. well uh, I think we, we had got to touch on this, the subject of the um, the land down at um, down towards Yukai there um, it's uh, it, well, it's a it, basically it's a, a private subdivision. Um, people can buy in. Um, when you buy in, you you become a shareholder in a community. Um, yeah, it it's uh, it's like everything. A bit of a leap of faith involved, but you know, um, at the end of the day, um, we know that the community is going to be a viable community. We know that there's going to be like you know things like our own private uh, community gardens. We'll have multiple streams of income for the for the community so that everybody participates in those or, or gets a, a, a derivative from those income streams you got a, you um, got a like a service station and a craft shop and yep. a cafe and a hemp farm going there already haven't yep, you yep mm. yep yeah there's a number of things going on already but there's a number of things that are, that are uh, already approved too that we can start to, to bring about as well you know um and they all they're all income streams for the for the people who buy in so when you're buying you're not just buying in to um, a, a block of land that that um, uh, backs on the um, national parks all the way around has incredibly pristine streams and rivers running through it, you know, waterfalls and all different sorts of things. It's it's it really is a, a most sacred place just just from the per perspective of being good for your soul. Mm. But the tribal aspects of the of the land make it truly unique. Mm. Truly unique. Yeah, well, the trick is, I think, you know, stepping back into tribal law. That's what we've got to do. That, that's, I mean, what they're doing with this whole, whole pandemic that I call it. I mean, it's a joke. It's an absolute joke. You know, people being locked down, and, and you know, like that's what we were talking about. How can people? You were saying um, people reacting to this situation, like when you're talking to the cops and like being polite and blah blah blah. We were going down that, that pathway. Yeah, well, you, what do you think people can do to combat this? You know, what, what's being done to us? Because it's not going to go away. They're just going to keep locking it down. They're going to yeah. bring down the whole financial system. Yeah. And a lot of people are going to suffer out of this. Some that I noticed the other day, which is absolutely horrific, if people think that this is being done by the government to help you. The other day when they declared that there were 20 people who had died from coronavirus, the death toll was actually up to 20, you know, and the whole country's locked down. On that well, very <laughs> same day... There were 21 people who had committed suicide as a result of the lockdown. So on that day, there yeah. were more people dead from suicide as a result of the lockdown than there was from the so-called pandemic. Pandemic, yeah. You know? Yeah, but put, you know? just to put that, put that this pandemic into perspective as well, um, Australia's death, death toll was 20. Yeah. Um, uh, every year, on average, since 1981, there have been 14 Aboriginal people killed in police custody every year. 14 people, and they carry this hissy fit on when 21 of them die, 20 yeah. of them die, like, yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. like, I understand, I understand it's a pandemic, yeah, 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 but it's not, but, but but I understand it, but there's no need for this not lockdown bullshit, it's utter crap. Yeah, exactly, so so what do we do, what, what do you suggest people do in the face oh, of Oh, look, this? I suggest keep your eyes open more than anything else, keep your eyes and your ears open, have a look, don't believe the bullshit that's been fed to you on mainstream TV, for fuck's sake, don't do it. Don't 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 harm yourself by believing the words coming out of the mouths of the people who have demonstrated non-stop non-stop that they are out to get you. They're out to they're out to harm you in whatever way they can, and as long as it's legal. Yeah, and we got we got a national national cabinet now that is running this country that has no basis in law. Hmm. That, We've got a government that has stood down because rather than deal with having to respond to matters before the, the UK courts that deal with the fraud that's been perpetrated against all Australians since 1973, they would rather walk away from their obligations to the Australian people and cower in a corner like the gutless snipes that they are than deal with the truth. The truth is, the Queen ain't the Queen of Australia. Yeah. End of story. End of story. So that's the thing, you know, and, and this is just going to get uh, more and more pear-shaped if people don't wake up to it. I think a lot of people are, though. I mean, a lot of people are pushing back. Um, 
but you know the way they're playing it is that they the people that are pushing back they're being saying well these people are being irresponsible and they're spreading the virus and they're endangering lives so they're kind of getting people to police themselves and neighbors to dob on their neighbors and yeah all of this sort of stuff you know it's and what, I, what I've been arguing is that people need to step outside of it. This, this is all fiction, and you don't actually have to go along with it anyway because this entire government has no legal standing. So how, how is any of their laws valid? You know, it's only valid if you choose to be part of that system. But if you're treated with the tribes, you can step outside of that and step back into Aboriginal law or, or tribal law. Mm. And, and how does any of this affect you then? Because then they have to prove that their law has any standing, which they can't on this con country. No. You know, so... That's my argument. Is the approach? And I, I can only I, I see that as really being the only viable way out of this mess that we're in. If people continue to look for legal loopholes and and go by the constitution and all that sort of stuff and and and, and go by the rules that they've set in place, then they've already they've already lost. Mate, you know? I, I've explored the constitution, whole twenty six pages of it, which which makes me laugh when you hear someone who says, oh, "I'm a constitutional expert." Okay, fine. So you read twenty six pages um, and got your head around it. Bully for you. Um, if you have nothing, nothing that they've they've brought to be in the last two hundred and thirty years has any substance. Mm. All right. They've claimed that they've had radical title, sovereignty, dominion, and all they've done is they've tried. All this is from the Australian government at this point in time. This is an exercise in divestment. They will, in the next six months, while they've got everything locked down, you watch how much of Australia is divested. But that's all right, because we know that Australia is just a paper jurisdiction. It has no land assets. So they can sell off to the Japanese and the Chinese or whoever it is. Whatever they want to sell off, they can sell off. But leave our fucking shit in the ground. Hmm. Hmm. Anything else you want to say? Anything else you want yeah, to bring to Yeah, fuck <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I whole, wholeheartedly support that. Fuck you, ScoMo. I think, I think the Australian government actually, folks, I think over this whole... COVID-19 pandemic, I think that the Australian government and the Australian media should all face charges of terrorism because that's yes. what this is. Well, they've, they've, killed, they've killed 19, 21 people. Well, they've killed 21 people by suicide so far and the terror and fear they're putting in the minds of people, I mean, there are various various forms of terrorism. Psychological terrorism is one of them. And if you want to be speaking English and not legalese and look up such words as terrorism in the Oxford English Dictionary, Terrorism is defined as violence or the threat of violence carried out against civilians as a means of coercion, often for political reasons. Every time you're coerced into compliance over the threat of violence by some cop dressed like Batman who comes and tells you you can't lay on the beach, that is terrorism in itself. He's threatening you with violence if you do not comply. That is terrorism. Absolutely. This whole legal system is based on terrorism, folks. And what they're doing with this COVID outbreak is terrorism against the population of the world. So many people are in fear. Yeah. So many people think this is real and it's all complete bullshit. So yeah, fuck you, ScoMo. And I think that's about all we need to say. I reckon we should give Max about another 30 seconds just to speak his mind <laughs> a bit more clearly. Now look, I'm, 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 don't get me wrong. I am not for anarchy. I'm not for mayhem in the streets. This whole issue, and Australia right now must deal with the issue of sovereignty. Like it or lump it. You can't bury your head in your ass any longer, okay? Because the rest of the planet's laughing at Australia going, you've got to be fucking kidding. It comes down to this. The stroke of midnight on the 30th of June this year, as an example. At midnight, the Queen disappears. The Governor-General disappears. The Governors disappear and the Federal and State Senates disappear. The Federal and State Senates are replaced by a Senate which is comprised of members of the tribes elected by the tribes to represent their sovereign interests in the Senate. So that without the Queen as the sovereign, because we know she's not, <clears throat> the true sovereign sits en masse over the House of Representatives at state and federal level. All political parties are outlawed. Okay, so we, we save them from any further breaches of Section 28 of the Crimes Act, which says that anybody who interferes with my political liberty has committed a crime, so when the caucus tells a seated member how to uh, vote in the House, that is interfering with my political liberty, because it's my right as his constituent to tell him how to vote. Um, so we get rid of all that snot, and all the, the, the hypocrites and the liars, and the, the Neanderthal dipshits like Skoma, who believes that God's going to come and save us all. Sorry, but fuck. Get rid of all that shit, right? Everybody who wants to run for Parliament is the single elected representative 
of their constituents. Hence, House of Representatives. Exactly what it should be. No political parties to sway the vote. There is no such thing in the Prime Minister, in, as Prime Minister in the Constitution. The reason being, we don't need one. Because the voice of reason and the majority should carry. Yeah? Hence the House of Representatives. That's the way it is. Right? So we sort all that out. We changed the Crimes Act so that instead of getting three years for interfering with political liberty, you get five or ten. And any member of the House who is seen to be colluding with another member of the House to alter, amend or shape the vote in the House gets five years or ten years. And then we'd start to see um, people getting into the, the realm of politics or governance um, for the sake of the people, not for the sake of the self. Right? Because they'd be, they'd be people going in there wanting to make a good change. But what we have to do, because we have Neanderthal pig-witted slugs like Barnaby Joyce, fuck's sake, Barnaby Joyce, ScoMo, have a look at these blokes, have a look at them, Christopher Pine, Ronwin Bishop, Julie Bishop, We can't, we, we, people can't afford to have these sorts of people sitting over the top of them. Mm, exactly. We need to get rid of them. We need to get rid of the, the fact that they are nothing more than purchasable quantities that can be purchased by the lobbyists to, to vote however the lobbyists want them to vote. Get rid of the lobbyists out of Parliament House. Same, same, lock them up, five or ten years, interfering with political liberty of the constituents. And the Senate, which are the sovereigns who have the interests of the land at heart, will make wise decisions according to the law of the land mm. that would be good let's do that what do you reckon june oh, june, oh, june, june, 1st. june 30th the june 30th july 1st at the stroke of midnight that can happen like that business does not have to stop we don't have to shed a drop of blood all we have to do is acknowledge the true and only sovereigns on the continent all it means is that some people are going to have to accept a political fact that they seem to not want to accept because of their bigotry or their racism. Yeah. That's the only inhibitor. Yeah. And people say, oh, we're giving the country back to the Aboriginals. No, we're not. We already we're, we're, just, we're kicking the crown out of control of your life. That's all it needs to happen. And like, this would just be, this would be, yeah. how would we achieve this? By simply treating with the tribes and recognising them well, as being the sovereign law on the land. Pretty much. Pretty much. That's what I mean, folks. Yeah. You've got a treaty with the tribes. You need start, to find the elders, to, elders. We might have, we have to start a petition and just uh, find out how many people we can get the vote for. Um, something like that occurring. Well, not even a petition, like a mandate. Your people's mandate for this this is this yeah. is to occur. Because a petition just sort of asks them to do stuff. But a mandate oh, yeah. is our, our mandate. I've been even suggesting that people all write to the Governor-General to express a loss of no confidence in this government. I mean, even if it's not going to work and it's under their law, it's still something. I mean, just stir the, rock the boat. That was, that, you know was the most, that was the most poignant Freudian slip then. A loss of no confidence. I mean... <laughs> I mean, yeah. Exactly. It's exactly what it is. <laughs> vote, of get no, any vote of vote of no confidence. Yeah, Freudian slip. But um, yeah, you know, just a loss of confidence in this government. People, even like it's under their law, but it's still something. We ne we need to push back yeah. by every possible means that we have to push back. You know. Yeah. Look. I've, but even even the Queen has acknowledged that, that she isn't um, the sovereign over this this country, hasn't she? Like you've been to yes, to London. Yes. I'll talk about that. One. <laughs> All right, all right, no good. Yeah. But uh, anything else you want to say? I, I, I just think that it's time for not just Australians, but for everyone to wake up. Have a look at, have a look at what's going on out there. I think, they're, they're, I think we can set a real example with this. You know, if, you can, if we can pull this off in this country, I mean, look at Canada, look at everything mm. the Crown's ever touched, mm. can, can look at this and say, yeah. well, hang on, this applies here as well. You know? Yeah, well, it applies in Canada because the Crown has breached every single one of its, its treaties. There you go, Canadian. There you go. Applies you need to keep an eye on this guy. It applies if you're in America. They breached every single one of those treaties. Hmm. Right? Um, it just seems ironic that these people who want to stand up and stand and hold up the moral standard are the the only ones that seem to break every agreement they enter with every people they enter it with. Hmm. Funny you that, know? isn't it? Yep, that is. Hmm. You know, and the Queen the Queen holds an admiralty jurisdiction, which is one interesting point before we do go. And under the um, Admiralty Offences Colonial Act 1848, 1849, um, it says that any crime that is committed within Her Majesty's colonies is to be tried and judged as though it were committed on board Her Majesty's ship. 
that's how they legally bring their admiralty jurisdiction ashore. And that's why they set their old courthouses up to look like ships. Now you have a look at some of the new courthouses. Have a look at the, the federal court in Adelaide. It's just, it is literally a sailing boat. A copper sheathed building is a copper sheathed sailing boat sitting in a puddle of water. Literally. Like, literally. It even has a sail up on top. You know, they're telling us, they're screaming it to us and we're not seeing it. Mm. You know? Admiralty jurisdiction, go home. Back to England where you come from. But what I think we should be talking about is how do we get it. You can cut, you can add it this way. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. We need to, need to spill the land a bit. So, yeah, anything like that with solutions as well. Um, um. One, one solution is really to get to get out of the system. You know, but we all understand that until the system disintegrates completely, which it appears it will, um, we we still have to interface with that. Well, this land that we've got down down uh, the Tweed Valley um, does that perfectly. Uh, you can live on your own block of land on the estate, um, uh, and either you can choose to work from home or you can choose to participate in the matrix. You can go backwards and forwards if you want. You know. Um, for those people who choose not to integrate necessarily with the matrix can still live holistically on that estate on their own block they can participate in the, the the community gardens the excess from that goes into our shop that we sell we sell that to the wider community and that money comes back to the community we'll have a medical center there um you know the income from the medical center the net income comes back to the community um there's so many different things going on there it's not funny um it's it's a place it'll be it'll be a fully gated community um, uh, there's there's all sorts of things. There's swimming holes, waterfalls, creeks. The the thing the thing as well. I mean, with what you're doing on this land, you know, people can be living there like under tribal law, but you've got this interface where they can still interface with the matrix because you can't disconnect yeah, from Petri exactly. while it's still here. You know, yep. but you can separate from it completely and be back under tribal law. You know, have your own security guards that are all yep. under tribal law. Yep. You don't need police on the property because we've got, we've got our own police. who are tribal police. You know, so, um, you know, you can kind of step outside of the system that way. So, you know, for people who are, who are losing everything through this crash, because this is going to be a major crash, you know, people's super's dwindling away, all this shit's going on. They could easily go and put it into the tribal community, and then they've, they've at least got that sovereignty, yes. you know, to be able to fall back on, because really that's what it's all going to come down to, you know. It is. And it's an important time to, to really establish this, eh? I think it's a... It's a great time for people to actually take a proactive step for a real future, not just uh, you know a, a nine to five in a dog box in a city somewhere. You know, here's an opportunity. You want get your kids out in the bush, get your kids out where they can breathe some fresh air, they can learn to connect with the land they walk on, not just walk on it, but connect with it. You know, um, you know, the, as in the intention of the, the the mob, they want to teach people what about tribal law. You know, we'll be holding proper cultural events and all the rest of it will all be happening, you know, um, as the tribe, um, uh, as their different ceremonies come around, we'll be invited to them, we'll, we'll, everyone will be able to participate in this, um, as people become more knowledgeable of the tribe and how it operates, the tribe will, t will turn around and offer to, to adopt them into the tribe, um, it'll be, it'll, it's not just a, a process of buying a block of land and, and living next to someone else on a similar block of land but disjointed as much as everyone will be living by themselves in their own block of land isolated it'll be very much a community because everybody who's out there is going to is going to have the same mind everyone's of the same mind where we're, we're not we're not disjointed from people we're disjointed from the system you know um we all we all we all like good company and you know barbecue and a swimming and carrying on and you know but we just don't like necessarily the system, the way the system, what it does to people. Yeah, well, you know? it's, it's sick, man. It's a sick parasitic system. Yeah. And this is the way. This is the way out of it. And and like I was saying, you know, this this can apply to Canada. This applies to to other countries. Yep. You know, all people have to do is understand what's really going on here. And and you've cracked the code. Yep. You know, you've cracked the legal code. And, and like like the the prophecy says or the legend says, you've been able to bring both laws together. You know, so I think it's a huge opportunity for people and, you know, and like I said people who are losing stuff through the crash as well what if you're a builder or something and you got 
you've got earth moving equipment and you can't run your business anymore. Well, they need all that down there. Yeah. You, you could go down there, you could just say, well, look, oh, I've got sure. all this earth. I don't have a lot of money because I've lost my business, but I've got 300 grand's worth of earth moving equipment and stuff. I want to come down here and build stuff and get a block of land that way and, and build yeah. your place. And, and then, we broke land, mate. Bar, yeah. You know, barter's barter. Because all of the stuff, all the stuff there that needs to be done, you, you need, you're going to have so much work there available, mm. even there just, just doing it. So... Mm -hmm. And then you've got the interface with the shop and the garage and the hemp farm and the art gallery. And so there's, you know, I, I'm kind of pretty, pretty excited about the fact that this is happening. And it, it, the timing is perfect you know, with everything that's going on now. And you've done all this week. It's taken you like 10 years, 12 years of, yeah, of taken, tripping them up and putting booby traps for them. Oh, the government? No, oh, it's yeah. taken longer than 10 years, mate. Yeah, um, but like, but the booby traps have been great. Like, you know, it was everything they think they're doing to, to, <laughs> to get their way. Mark's actually gone and he's put this suggestion in their mind so they'll do this and he's he's already set the booby trap up so that once they do it, it leads exactly where he wanted it to go. So it's been sort of great to watch really. Well, we haven't had the resources to to do, for example, the, the recognition campaign. There is not a hope in hell that we could have raised the money to buy shirts and badges and this and that and this and that. So next best thing was to get them to produce them for us. <laughs> you know? Um, because what it did, it brought the, brought the issue of the recognizance between the tribe and the crown right to the front of everyone's mind. Yeah. Right to the front of everyone's mind. Yeah. Even so much so to the point now people are actually asking, what happened with recognition? Or what, what has happened with recognition? Where is this process at? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, basically it all happened and I said, you just basically said, well, thank you for making that legal distinction, no contract. Yep. Yeah. And as we saw the High Court on the 10th of February this year, the High 20, 2020, the High Court of Australia said that there is in fact a third class of persons, or people. And there's aliens, and there's citizens, and there's non-alien non-citizens. Yeah. And we are non-alien non-citizens. We are non-aliens because even though we're outside the Crown's jurisdiction, we're not an alien. This is our country, this is our land. And we're not in citizens. Because even though we're on country, we're not part of the Crown's citizenry. Yeah. You know? I can step aside, left and right, however I see. Okay? Because I've got this thing I hold out here like a jacket. And when I want to, I put it on. Just to make life easy for me. If I get... Someone wants to know who I am or what I am. Okay, look, I'm Gun and Barty, Jack and Mara, but for the purposes of our interaction, um, you you need to talk to him. So I'll, I'll speak as if I am him on his behalf. What is it you want to know? Yeah. You know? That's, that's the game they want to play. I'm happy to play that game, but leave me the fuck out of it. Yeah, and that's the thing. If you're part of the tribe, you can, you can, it doesn't mean you give up your citizenship. You can step into that if you want to. Well, in the, in the, in, in the judgment of the High Court, um, the most prominent case being Barnaby Joyce, when all these parliamentarians were removed because they breached 44-1 of the Constitution. Now, if we, we as blackfellas had gone to the High Court and argued that case and said, hang on, as an Aboriginal man, or as a tribal man, um, I haven't renounced my tribal citizenship, so I retain it as a birthright. They would have gone, no, nah, fuck you, Charlie Brown. You, you're one of us. End of story. But, but, someone got to be in a bonnet to some other people, and we asked the question a different way. And the question that was asked in the High Court was, if I'm a federal parliamentarian, and I was born with an alternate citizenship, and I didn't renounce that, does that disqualify me from parliament? Well, yes, it does, right? Because there was political vengeances to be played. So all you do is you play the political vengeances against the key parties. They'll give you the judgment that you want at their expense because it cost us a cent to go to the High Court. They were the ones who went to the High Court. And what did the High Court say? Barnaby Joyce, you retained your birthright. Okay, thank you very much. I retain my fucking birthright. I retain my tribal sovereignty. I retain my tribal citizenry. And fuck you, Scamo, you don't own my country. I don't care how they want to play this game. No. They're on a highway to a fucking flogging. That's why the gutless gutter snipes have cancelled Parliament for the next six months. They're trying to figure out what the fuck to do. Because their, their scam at trying to turn Australia into a corporate state has been blown out of the water. The Queen of England has admitted to many people in writing that she is not the Queen of Australia and she can't be the Queen of Australia because she's the Queen of England and to be the Queen of Australia would be to 
commit treason against the people of England. So if she's not the Queen of Australia, there is no Queen of Australia, who the fuck swore you in, Skoma? Eh? Freudenberg? Eh? All the rest of you maggots? Who swore you in? Governor General appointed by the Prime Minister, who then appointed the Prime Minister. This is sort of like a circle pissing competition, isn't it? You know what I mean? Yeah. Everyone's filling up everyone's pockets. Doesn't work. Yeah. You know? So, come out and sit on country. Come out and sit out, mate. Come and, come and buy in out here and sit on country and enjoy living. Enjoy being alive. Because that's all it is. You know? There's no great bells and whistles or anything else. The only thing that comes with this land is the spirit and the knowledge that you are alive. When you And I, I can't put it into words. I don't know anybody who can actually put this. You, you've driven across a property. You can't put into words the feelings you get when you traverse those different lines. Yeah, I know. And you it's, know? It's, it's what I've been saying to people all along. You know, it's, it's about remembering who and what you are. That's the whole thing. I mean, this, this whole whole construction is, is mind games. It's, it's mind control. The whole, the whole belief that this system is real is just an idea. It's just an idea. You now you want you want the COVID nineteen to go away. Turn off the television and social media, and it'll be gone. Yeah. Simple as that. Yep. You, you throw your, throw your cell phone away and turn off your TV, and it's, it's all good. Yeah, come and sit on country. I think that's about all we need to say, though. Hey, Mark. Yep. I mean, um, so. go on. Good Mark, go on. I don't know which one to call you. Call whatever the fuck you want. But. Uh, <laughs>